Hello, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. In this video, we're going to talk about the benefits of using a sewer camera in conjunction with radon mitigation. Let's get started by explaining exactly how it works. So here we've got the reel. We've got about 100 feet of cable rolled up on this. That will allow us to extend this out inside drain tile or inside plumbing. Here we've got the camera head, and then here we've got the display so we can see what the camera is seeing on this display. Here we've got the locator. And this is really cool and really helpful because we can put this in the drain tile or plumbing and we can see exactly where this camera head is um, by scanning around the basement or outside or wherever this might be. One of the other cool things is we can also see exactly how deep that is. So if we are in drain tile and we want to core down right on top of the drain tile, there's no guessing. We can see, hey, the drain tile is right here and it's eight inches down and core a hole right on top of it. Where it comes in handy when we're doing subslab depressurization if your house doesn't have drain tile, is oftentimes we want to be where they're settling to take advantage of that disturbed soil. So we can run this down plumbing pipes, see exactly where that plumbing pipe is, and then core down on top of it or next to it. Um, and that'll give us the confidence to drill confidently and make the system much more energy efficient um, and effective. Now let's look at some of the problems that the sewer camera will help us identify. So the first one would be, let's say the drain tile is filled with soil. So we've got a couple different options there. Um, in the past, I've been able to push through a hill of soil and kind of smooth it out where we didn't have to core down on top of it. Other instances, if it's something that we can't push through with the sewer camera, we just locate exactly where that uh, blockage is with the wand and the camera and then uh, core a five inch hole down on top of it, clean that blockage out um, by removing the soil and then that will allow us to get airflow through that blockage. One of the second problems we sometimes find, and I found it in, in my old house actually, is sometimes the drain tile has a um, sock that's over it and that's to prevent silt from entering the system. And they had two pieces of drain tile where they had stretched that sock over and tied a knot in it. And those two pieces were butted together, um, which is basically not allowing any airflow through that drain tile. It'd be like having a rag stuffed in the drain tile. Um, so that in that instance, again, we can locate where that obstruction is, core down on top of it, remove that blockage, and then that'll allow us to pull air through the drain tile in that scenario. One of the third problems that it's helpful in identifying, and we ran into this a few months ago, is the drain tile um, went from the sump in, to a storage area, and the two pieces of drain tile were not connected. They were just next to each other, and the end of each was full of sand, and we weren't getting pressure field extension beyond that. Um, so we, again, use the sewer camera, locate where that obstruction was, core down on top of it, um, and then we were able to clean out the sand and then connect those two pieces of drain tile so we could get airflow through it. One of the four scenarios is, let's say we have a house with drain tile and we're not getting pressure field extension to the walkout side of the house. In that instance, oftentimes we find that the walkout has a lot of settling below the slab. It might be several inches or maybe even a foot, and it's... Uh, we need to tie into that air to get the pressure field extension we're looking for. Oftentimes the drain tile is not on the walkout wall and ends several feet um, before that settling occurs. So in that case, we can use the sewer camera, find the end of the drain tile, and then dig a tunnel either by stitching or sometimes it's only a few feet so we can get it with one core hole. But it basically connects the drain tile uh, to the air pathway uh, below the walkout portion of the home. Fifth would be a home with water in the drain tile. So a house we worked on last year, the drain tile was installed like this and it had all these peaks and valleys. So as we push the sewer camera through that, it would be down in water and then it'd be up in air and down in water and up in air. And you can imagine it would be hard to move air through that uh, type of drain tile system. And the house was uh, built on clay, so that wasn't draining uh, like it would in a home with sand. If you wanna see more about water and drain tile, check out this video. And then sixth, we have this house. So when I was bidding the job, I ran my sewer camera down uh, the drain tile. The sump is right below me here. And I found about four or five feet away, the drain tile was crushed. And I think what happened is the kitchen sink clean out is uh, right where that obstruction is. So I think the plumbing um, coming down from the kitchen sink, they pinched that drain tile closed because there's just a small opening there and I can't even get the sewer camera through there. So I tried to go the other direction and 28 feet over, um, we get the corner of the house and that drain tile is full of concrete. Um, so we have a couple obstructions that we may have to contend with in this home. So to get started, we are going to drill our test holes. 
we are going to do a communication test by sealing the sump, applying suction to it, and see if we are reaching uh, throughout the basement. If we're not, we are going to start with the crushed drain tile here, um, remove that obstruction, and do the communication test again. Hopefully we don't have to deal with the concrete uh, down in that end of the drain tile. So I will turn on my vacuum. Now we're applying suction. We can see all of our numbers start to go down on test holes one, two, and three. Um, we're reaching test hole one really well, but two and three, um, it's not really enough to really pull it negative. So we've got a couple options, or that tells us a couple of things. At this CFM, our radon system is not really going to work to reduce the radon levels on the front side of the house. And that's probably due to the obstructions that we've got in the drain tile. So we could use a larger radon fan and a larger radon fan is going to be able to move a lot more air than my shop vac. My shop vac is not great at moving lots of air. It's great at applying a lot of suction. So I can't really predict what a higher airflow would be with my shop vac in this situation. I could also move my suction point to the spot where I want to put my suction point because there's not really a good route out of the house here. On the back of the house, we've got a deck, so an outside system out of here is out of the question. We could go up uh, to a closet or in the chase next to the B vent, but as of right now, our uh, garage route is still our, our number one route. So we are going to explore and see what it looks like uh, if we put a suction point over under the stairs there and do the same setup. All right, so this is kind of where I'd like to have my suction point. Drain tile should run through here. Normally we would run the sewer camera to find exactly where this is, but since it's obstruction, obstructed in both directions, I'm gonna show you another way you can find the drain tile. So I'm going to start by drilling a series of quarter inch uh, holes. And when I hit the top of that drain tile, I should be able to drop or my bit should fall about four inches or so when I'm centered on that. It's not as easy, but a good alternative. So let's see if we can find the top of that drain tile to core a hole on. This one and this one felt the loosest, felt pretty tight over here. Here I'm in the foot in, so I'm guessing the drain tile is right there. Sometimes it's really obvious um, you can feel that drop. Other times it's not so obvious, especially if there's rock or some loose soil that's easy, easy to push through. So I think I am going to center my hole on this one uh, and hope for the best. All right, so we almost center punched the drain tile off a little bit, but good for the method we used. So now I'm going to finish the cut in the top of the drain tile with the Sawzall, so we're able to easily pull air from there. All right, now that is open to the top of the drain tile, we are going to uh, place in a two to four inch fern coat coupler with a chunk of pipe on here. This will help expand out that opening. Uh, if your hole saw is brand new, it might be a larger opening and you can always wrap a rag around it to take up some of that um, room if needed, if the hole's a little too large. So I've got that in there, it's a pretty snug fit. Now I'm going to hook up my two inch pitot tube again. So we've got about 113 uh, pascals of velocity pressure. So we can go back and translate that to CFM and we'll see how our numbers look. All right, since we're not getting the desired pressure fuel extension in test holes two and three, uh, next logical step is to sewer camera the drain tile since we have a new access port or point and we'll see if there's any other obstructions and then do our best to locate those obstructions and then see how we want to deal with those. So. Let's do the sewer camera. All right, so I've got my sewer camera set up. I am going to turn on the, the, the sewer camera once I get it in here, and then it'll count how many feet in I am. So we'll put the camera in there. We'll turn on the camera, and then I will push that, and I'm gonna to go towards the, uh, towards the sump basket, so I should hit that spot where the drain tile is crushed, provided there aren't any more obstructions. We do have some sand in the bottom of the drain tile, but not a ton. So now I'm at the corner right over there, 12 feet in. And 18 feet, I hit the obstruction. So now we can locate that, make sure it lines up with the other um, mark I wrote on here the other day, 
and then uh, we'll sewer camera in the other direction and see if we find any other obstructions. All right, so here I've got the um, clean out for the plumbing for the kitchen sink. And here's where I had my mark from the other day. Now I'll locate coming from this direction. And you want to hold this plumb when you're doing it. They've got a mark on there for you. So we got right there, I've got one. And then right there, I've also got one. So I marked that with the two red ones. And then right in between halfway is called the equator. And I get centered right on top of that. And then I rotate this and I can see my camera head is six inches down from right there. That's where my camera is right now. And here is where my obstruction is. And I did side my camera back because you do want it to be level. So I could probably side it up to here. So I think kind of this section right here is where that drain tile is crushed. So what I'm thinking, if we do end up dealing with that, is I don't want to core down right here because the plumbing might be there. I might want to come back here somewhere and that'll give me um, room to work in each location. Worst case scenario, I've got to core two spots um, to get around that. But um, we've got this one located. Uh, duct tape is also works good to mark this since crayon obviously doesn't write on carpet very well. Uh, so now we'll go and run the other way and see what we find there. All right, now we're gonna run the sewer camera in the other direction. So we're running along the garage wall here, and so the garage is to the right, and we're running towards the front of the house. And these green hoses are the weep hoses, so these are tied into the block um, below the slab. So when we suck on the drain tile, we're sucking on the weep hoses, which is sucking on the hollow block wall, and that's why it's important to seal the top of the block, um, if you can get access, obviously because you'd be pulling conditioned air from the house. And these make it a little bit challenging to sewer camera because sometimes they get stuck on them. So there we're making the bend at the front corner. Now we're running along the front of the house. You can see where the water has been. This is upside down right now, so I can flip it. So this is the right way. You can see where the water's been in the bottom half of this drain tile, and you can see some of the sand in the bottom. So that's 20 feet away, so maybe 10 feet from the bottom of the stairs on the front of the house. So I'm gonna start with pulling this carpet, and then I'm gonna transfer my marks to the floor. I think there's some tiles under here we'll have to pull up, uh, but we'll see what we find. That's where we're six inches down. And then my mark from the other day is here. And then I think the plumbing probably comes down somewhere in there. So it probably runs over to the mechanical room because there's no plumbing on this side of the house. And it probably turns somewhere in here, runs this way. So the safest spot for a core hole would be probably somewhere in here. So I'm gonna pull some more carpet. Not pulling up that great, but they are replacing the carpet. so. Not the end of the world or all the flooring in the basement. So we'll get that popped up and core hole there, see what we find. All right, we've got the whole cord and I'm able to feel this, what I think is inch and a half plumbing for the kitchen sink. And it comes right through there. You can kind of see it there. The drain tile is embedded in the concrete. So that's probably part of why we're not getting great pressure field extension because three quarters of it, of those little slits in the drain tile, we're not able to move air through. Uh, so we were six inches deep here, then the obstruction, I don't remember how deep I was here last week, um, but I do remember that side, I was only five inches deep. Um, so it's very likely embedded in concrete over on that side of the house too, which stinks because there's no rock by the drain tile so we're not able to take advantage of that. And it stinks that the weep hoses are into the drain tile because that means we're pulling a lot of air from the top of the block and we can't get at anything in this house to seal that. So I'm gonna have to try to figure out 
how to magically cut a hole in the bottom of that drain tile. Um, I think I'm just going to have to do it with a utility knife. And then it's looking like I'm probably going to have to core a hole on this side and cut a hole in the bottom of that drain tile. And then have a pit here that air can kind of bypass this crushed part of the drain tile. All right, I found with one core hole, I was just not able to cut through the bottom of that drain tile. I just didn't have any leverage on it. So we ended up coring this hole. We found the drain tile was still crushed. So we cored this one and got into that, uh, opening up all that drain tile. Now the plumbing pipe runs through here. So I've got um, a gap about this big where we can pull air from on top of that plumbing pipe. And then over here, we kind of had to do the same thing. So we've got uh, the drain tile fully open from here all the way around to there now. And what we found with that is the plumbing, uh, the drain tile did not get crushed by the plumbing. It probably got crushed by the contractor guy or the concrete contractor because it ran over the plumbing, uh, which would have put it right near the top of the slab. So somebody squished it down uh, to this shape. And this is kind of what we found. Um, there's a lot more squished than this, but it just didn't have a very big opening um, where we couldn't even get that sewer camera through. Um, so it was kind of blocking a lot of our airflow. So now that we got that sorted out, we are going to um, treat it like we do a stitching hole. We're gonna cut a short chunk of pipe to give this um, styrofoam plug some support. And then we're gonna put these styrofoam plugs in, push them near the bottom of the hole. We'll put a four inch tap con in there to give that concrete some support. And then we'll re-pour the concrete uh, on these holes where we can put the flooring and stuff back. And then we will be able to run our uh, mock SP1 mocking up suction point one again. And hopefully we'll get the numbers we're looking for and we can figure out what size pipe we need and what fan we need. All right, so we ended up with running three inch pipe and we have a Fantech RN1, which is the smallest drain on fan, be like an RP140 or a Festa Spirit. And removing that blockage in the drain tile allowed us to get the pressure field extension we were looking for. So our radon levels are all around one right now, and hopefully they continue to fall. Radon fan's been installed up and running since last night. So you can see how valuable something like a sewer camera is. Um, we were just talking about like, what do we do before we had the sewer camera? And I think we just didn't know. You know, maybe it was something where we would add another suction point or, you know, Possibly, have, I don't think I've had to do it, but somebody might have to add another system um, just because something like a little blockage like that. So super helpful. Um, if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up or share it with somebody, that else, somebody else that might benefit from it. And until next time, I'm Jesse with American Radon Mitigation. Thank you so much for watching.